power balance testing. In this video, we're going to talk about how to perform a cylinder power balance test. This is a great test that we can do that helps us identify which cylinder is not contributing to the process. There's a handful of ways that we can do it. And so we're going to run through each of those and talk about the outcomes. So the power balance test is a method for me to identify exactly which cylinder is the offender. So if I had a vehicle like this that maybe had a misfire and it's a hard miss, it's consistent at idle, I can do a power balance test to see which cylinder is not contributing. So there are multiple methods for me to identify and go through the sequence of a power balance test. Uh, more commonly today, we're gonna use some method, either the tachometer in the car or a scan tool like this, so I can read engine RPM. My goal is to look at what's the idle at now and then eliminate and take away something from a cylinder one by one and see what does it drop to. If I've got a misfire, the cylinder that is misfiring will not drop as much as the others. Right, and so we'll go through that. Right now we've got one method which is on the scan tool. Most scan tools will allow me to disable fuel injectors individually. And so in the case of this RAV4, I've got what they call fuel cut and they're labeled for individual cylinders. So if I back up the screen just a second, you'll see here, this is under the special tests or actuator tests. And so I've selected cylinder number four, fuel cut. We go there, it tells us it's a engine running test. Before I do the test, I want to allow the engine idle speed to stabilize and make sure that it's consistent, right? And so we're right around 850, a little bit of fluctuation. And so then I go on this particular tool up to the top, I'm gonna turn on the fuel cut and there we can see a major dip and then it tries to catch itself. Eventually it stabilizes, but the idle is actually higher. So in this particular case, we'd want to pay attention to what was the initial dip and then just what was the oscillation, where did it go to? Uh, we should be able to find pretty quickly that basically there's no change if I had an engine that was already misfiring. The next method that we can use is to either unplug an ignition coil or a fuel injector at each cylinder one by one and look for the same drop. So I've got my scan tool hooked up here so that I can look at engine RPM and so I can identify those fluctuations or identify the drop. And so for this process, I'm gonna go one by one and unplug either a fuel injector or a coil. Which one's better? Ideally, I would unplug a fuel injector. I've gotta be really cautious about disabling spark because now I potentially have raw fuel still going through the cylinder, going to the catalyst, and with enough raw fuel that could do damage to the catalyst. So if I opt to do an ignition coil, I want to be really sensitive to not unplug it more than a handful of seconds to identify the drop. So here I've got my RPM screen. I've got a pretty steady idle. I'm going to go ahead and disable a cylinder. We see an initial drop down to 602. And just like we saw in the scan tool test, the total RPM actually rises a little bit when I've got something unplugged. And again, that's okay. If I just look for my initial drop and I look for the total picture, the total behavior of the engine, that's gonna get me the information that I need. So that was cylinder number four. We'll go to cylinder number three. A very similar drop down to here. We'll let things stabilize. Cylinder number two. A little bit less of a drop, but I didn't give it enough recovery time probably. And we'll go to cylinder one. And just to get them all on one screen, I'll get number four one more time. And so there, if I pause the screen, we can see I've got cylinders four, I'm sorry, three, two, one, and four. And you can see they've all got very comparable dips, right? The minimum RPM that we achieved is all very much the same. So power balance testing can be a really beneficial and simplistic test so that I can learn more about the engine and figure out exactly which cylinder is misfiring. 
If I've got a multi-cylinder misfire, things might be a little bit more difficult, and I'm probably gonna have to look at some other data to figure out those trends. But in this case, when I'm doing this test, if I can do it on a scan tool, that's really gonna be my first choice. Uh, one is that it's always gonna disable fuel, and so I don't risk any catalyst damage. The other is a lot of manufacturers really discourage disconnecting and reconnecting connectors a lot of times um, because it can lead to terminal fit and terminal tension issues in the future. So go to my scan tool, figure out if I can do it on that process, go through that. That's gonna help me identify exactly which cylinder I wanna spend time on so I can go into my individual you know, cylinder diagnosis and look for spark, fuel, and air.